What's going on party people? Kyle again here and today I want to talk about retina displays. How we can support them within our workflow without pulling our hair out. Now the title of this presentation is Retina Done Right, an Easier Better Workflow. And as best I can tell this is the most efficient, most performant way to serve up high resolution images for these high pixel density displays. The first thing I want to talk about is what you're probably doing. You're probably not supporting Retina at all and that's unfortunate. As responsible web designers and developers it's our job to keep up with current technology and upcoming technology and to start supporting this stuff immediately. So get on it. If you are supporting Retina then you're more than likely serving up multiple image assets with either JavaScript or CSS something like retina.js or media queries. But you really don't have to do that. What I'm suggesting you do in this workflow is serve up single retina sized images and then resize those with CSS. Now don't close your browser. I know that goes against convention, but I think I might blow your mind today. The tools you're gonna need in this workflow are a copy of Photoshop, a big ass image, and a text editor. And that's about it. So within Photoshop, what you're gonna do is double the size you think your image should be. For example, if you're declaring a width and height of 200 pixels on, in your CSS, then you'll save out um, an image with a width and height of 400 pixels in Photoshop. And when you go to save out that file in Photoshop, you're going to save for the web at a low quality. Now let me give you a quick demonstration of how to do this, and hopefully this demonstration will alleviate you of any worry about putting low quality JPEGs on your websites. Let's go into our, or into our uh, project here, and we have a banner JPEG image. We're going to pull that into Photoshop real quick. Now this image, I want it to be 1200 pixels wide and 600 pixels high in my CSS. So for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to save out two different versions. One at those dimensions or standard dimensions and then one at twice those dimensions for retina displays. Let's resize this to 1200 by 600 and we're going to save for web and we're going to save it out at a quality of 75 percent. You'll notice that that will render a JPEG with a file size of 159k roughly. Save that out. and We're going to name it banner-standard there we go. And then we're going to back up here and save out a retina sized version at 35% quality. Now you'll notice that even though the dimensions are 2400 by 1200, it's going to save out a version of this JPEG at 154K, roughly. Save that out. And we're going to name this Banner Retina. Once we've done that, let's go ahead and close out Photoshop. And let's go into our HTML. Now I've done a little bit of work, but let's fill in the rest of this, shall we? The first version is standard sized banner with dimensions of 1200 by 600. And then the second one is going to be retina sized banner with dimensions of 2400 by 1200. We're going to give both of these images a class of banner, pretty basic and we're going to declare our image paths. Save that out and then let's go into our CSS. For a class of banner we're going to do a width of 1200 pixels and then a height of 600 pixels. Save that out and let's go into the browser. Refresh this. And this in the browser is where this workflow really proves itself. You'll notice that uh, the first standard size banner or 1200 by 600 is pretty blurry. It's got a lot of artifacting going on. However on the second one the retina sized image or 2400 by 1200 everything is nice and crisp 
And you will remember that with the standard sized image, we saved out at 75% quality. The retina sized image, we saved out at a mere 35% quality. So how can we get away with this? Well, it's because retinas have such high pixel density. It's that density of the pixels that alleviates and all but negates artifacting within our JPEGs. So we can serve up a huge image, save it out at a very low quality, and it looks great on retina, and then via CSS we're resizing that down to half its original dimensions, so artifacting is not a problem on standard dimensions either. And I don't know about you, but that is very cool. So let's go back into our presentation here. Let's go to the next slide. Let's talk about optimization. Now, even though we've saved these out at one at 75% and one at 35%, you can further optimize your JPEGs. Um, if you're on a Mac, I recommend a little app called Image Optim. Or if you're not on a Mac, I recommend Kraken. They both do great jobs at uh, compressing JPEGs without losing quality. So let's go back into our project here. And we're going to select these two, Banner-Retina and Banner-Standard. And we're simply going to drag them into Image Optim. I'm on a Mac, after all. It's going to work its magic, and then it's going to give us a little readout. Here we go. Banner-Retina, we save 6.7%. We've got that down to 148K, roughly. And then the Banner-Standard, we save 3%. And we've gotten that down to roughly 159K. So yeah, we served up a retina-sized image that is a smaller file size than standard size dimensions and looks better on all displays. And that's the real beauty of this workflow. You have no need for JavaScript. You don't have to traverse the DOM and replace images. You have no need for media queries. Uh, you have fewer HTTP requests and you have fall, uh, smaller file sizes and images that look great on all displays. This is very cool. Now I've linked up some relevant links. I can't really claim this technique as my own. I didn't discover it. I just adopted it after reading an article called Retina Revolution. I highly recommend you check it out. Um, if there are any anything missing from this video then uh, Retina Revolution definitely goes over it. Um, I also linked up an article called The One Pixel Rule which is about uh, mocking up retina size stuff um, inside Photoshop without pulling your hair out. And then also we linked up to ImageOptim and Kraken.io. I will be linking to this presentation in the description below. And yeah, that's about it for me. If you have any uh, suggestions or questions, leave them in the comments below or hit me, all, hit me up on all the social medias. And until next time, rock on guys.